Hey everyone, I'm Julian of Julian Creates and welcome back for the sew along for my latest pattern with Nomi, Nomi 2079, where this time we will be sewing View B, which are the asymmetrical fly front pants. Um, you can check in the last video to see um, how I put together View A, which is the shirt. These pants really were inspired by wanting something different in menswear. Um, after seeing Marcia of Kichibi Style, her asymmetrical um, cargo pants, I was like, I love that detail and that feature and would love to see it in menswear. Um, I decided to do it more on a formal or traditional route, doing it on a regular pair of trousers with a slimmer leg. And it really works well with the... Um, with the way that the top is fit so that it gives you a nice mix. Here I did it in a metallic suiting. So I was looking like a rock star, but this can definitely also be done in a linen and a like a, a cotton sateen suiting, something like that to really give you a nice feel. I'm going to be using a cotton sateen suiting to go along with the top, which has a similar colorway. We'll get into that in a bit, but get your fabric, get your pattern, Let's get started. Now that we are starting on the pants, which is view B of Nomi 2079, these are the pieces that you will need. You will need one of piece nine, which is your right front. You will need one of piece 10, which is your left front. And as you can see here, I've already started to cut in my notches and I am using a stretch cotton sateen suiting. You will need to a piece 11, which are your pocket linings. Um, because of the way that this fabric, I am using all the same fabric, but you could also use a pocket, a pocket lining fabric. If you want to make like a coordinated set, you can absolutely use your um, shirt fabric as your pocket lining. Then out of interfacing, you're going to cut two of your um, piece 12, which is your pocket interfacing. Then you will have one of piece 13, which is your right pocket um, side front. One of piece 14, which is your left side front, which is part of your pocket piece. Then you will need one of number 15, which is your right fly piece. And then one as well as one of interfacing of your left fly facing, which is piece number 16. Then you will cut two of piece 17, which is your back piece. I've already started making sure that I'm marking my notches as well as uh, my darts and placement for my pocket. Here I am um, kind of diverting from the pattern just a tad bit. Normally you would need piece number 18. You will cut two of these and two of the interfacing for your welt. And then you will cut two of in your lining fabric for your pocket. Um, this is piece number 19. What I'm doing is I'm going to do all um, like an all in one welt and pocket piece. So I basically took my pocket piece and basically cut with my rotary cutter this part of it to basically this placement line. And then I pull the pattern down just to give me extra space. Plus I also like deeper pockets. This is an easy alteration that you um, anybody could do is just to extend their pocket length that they want to have a deeper back pocket, but you can also use it to um, add in and do like a grown on welt and we'll add in that piece of interfacing before we sew the welt in. And because I'm using all the same fabric, um, I don't need to cut any of my back pocket facing, but if you are using like a lining um, fabric different from your actual like pants, you will want to cut two of these. And then finally, you want to cut two of your right waistband. So you wanna cut two of fabric as well as two of interfacing. And piece 22, which is your left waistband. You wanna cut two of the fabric and two of the interfacing. All right, so 
I've gotten everything cut of my pans as well as I've gone and interfaced my pieces. Um, as you can also see, I went ahead and finished all of my raw edges, um, just throwing it through my serger. I like to uh, press my seams open and I find that by going ahead and finishing the raw edges first allows for a cleaner finish and easier to do it flat with the pieces instead of trying to maneuver a whole garment under my serger to finish my seams. So the pattern will have you start working on your pockets first. I'm a person, I like to finish up my prep um, and one of the things that I do for prep is like all of my darts and stuff. Those are the first things that I do when I'm starting on a garment. So instead of um, working on my front first, we're going to start on the back by... I've gone ahead and marked my dart placement. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this end, starting at the top of the dart, working my way to the end, not um, knotting down here, but making sure I have a tail so I can tie it off. So we're gonna put this dart in, and then we're going to press it towards the, um, actually towards the side, I think. But we will definitely um, sew this in and then press it. And then I think I'm gonna go ahead and start on my back welt pockets next. So I went ahead and sewed um, in my dart tied off the edge and then pressed it towards the center seam. Now, the pattern calls for, as you are starting your welt, is to take a little scrap of interfacing and press that over your marks. Now, to keep, make sure that I know where my marks are because I've already marked them in, I'm gonna put some pins on the other side so that I can then just re, re, um, remark these once I press this interfacing in. All right, so I went ahead and added that uh, little scrap of interfacing, pressed that on. Then I went ahead and remarked um, the placement for my welt pocket. So now, the way that I do this here is that I like to go ahead and sew a box around this welt area. Um, I find that it just gives me cleaner place to fold and everything like that. So I literally do a whole entire box around that. And then we will start putting on the pocket. So I went ahead and um, stitched out or basted out the box uh, that I have for my welt pocket. And I just find that it is easier for me to navigate how to put the pocket in once I have that in place. Now, once we have that in place, I'm doing my pocket a bit differently. So instead of using the welt piece, I have um, increased the size of my pocket piece by I think I did it by three inches. Usually I do that on every piece. So I literally cut this bottom portion at the same length. And then I just pull my top piece up to add some length to it. So instead of, um, and since I'm also using the same fabric, I'm not using the facing piece, but I have went ahead and drawn out my lines here for my welt markings there. And we're going to place that, those lines right on top of that stitching and then I will pin it. Now, I'm going to pin it from the back side because I find that it is easier for me to sew from this side because then I can match up with these lines and we will sew this line and this line only. No. All right, so I went ahead and went over my parallel lines again, attaching um, this pocket flap. Now, as you can see here, my lines are a little, a little squiffy from the lines that I marked but I did use this as just a guide point. The reason I saw it from this side is because these are where I want the pocket placement to be exactly. Um, so this is what works for me, but use, of course, what works best for you. So now that we have done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start opening up my slip for my pocket. Okay. And I don't go all the way over with my rotary cutter 
I then go back in with a pair of sharp small scissors and then we cut two that line of stitching on either side. Once we do that, we're going to start um, flipping this pocket piece towards the inside and giving it a, a press. All right, so what I did was I went ahead and pressed all of that top piece towards the top um, and around the sides. Now, I did not, once I turned it in, I did not press this down yet because we wanna make our welt. So I literally pressed it up so I at least know where that stitching line is. And then what we can do is from the back here, taking this piece down to create that welt. And we're gonna give this a press again so that that's all nice and in place. So, and just to provide a little bit of clarification, just making sure that we are on the same page, I went ahead and pressed my welt in place. So here's my welt area. I'm now about to take it back to my machine and stitch here in the ditch while the pocket is still unfolded. Okay, once um, we have stitched in the ditch there, I'll give it another press. Then we'll fold this pocket piece up and in place. So it'll look like that, where we'll match up at the top here. I will give it another press. And then from this front, I can go and making sure that I um, sew down those little side tabs, holding everything in place and together. Once I hold down those side tabs and press those in place, I can also do the same along this top edge, making sure that we are going along that um, pressed seam so that we are holding that welt in place where we would want it um, and making sure that we're not going to have any agonizing pockets that look like they can just gape open at any time. So we'll finish this up and then we'll come back as we are about to put the pocket together. All right, so we have attached at the top and on either side, we have the whole pocket pressed in place. This is what it looks like on the back side. So now what we're gonna do is put the rest of the pocket together. So I like to move everything out the way and we are going to sew along this edge. Now, you can do like with your regular sewing machine and then finish the edge. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to my serger and we're just going to serge all the way down, catching both edges of the, edges of the pocket and putting the pocket together as well as finishing the edges of my fabric. So we'll do that on both sides. Then I'm going to run a line of basting stitch right along the top edge here so that I can make sure that this edge is attached, attached at the top. And then we're gonna set these aside and start working on our fronts. All right, so let's start working on our fronts. Now, I'm gonna be demonstrating this on the right front. And remember, there is, you cut one of your right front, one of your left front, and the pocket pieces, the, like the pocket facings are the same, but the rest of the pocket pieces are different. But the construction of the pockets are the same. So, um, I will be showing on my right front here. Um, and the similar to so what I did in the back, I did to the front. So I went ahead and made sure that I finished my edges along what will be like my zipper and my crop seam and down the inner leg as well as the outer leg. I did not do um, where I'm installing my pocket, nor did I do the top because those will be encased. So we're going to take uh, one of our pocket pieces that also has been interfaced using a uh, piece, piece 12, which is our pocket interfacing. And we're going to lay that right sides together. And we're going to make sure that we are matching our notches on both edges. And we are then going to sew between the dots on the pattern. And I have small marks. So we're gonna sew in between those. All right, so once I have gone ahead and sewn between the dots, I then went, it went and pressed the seam allowances towards this pocket lining. We are then going to understitch it, give it another press, 
fold it back making sure that that edge is right along that corner and then we're going to top stitch it at a quarter of an inch all right so we have everything we understitched i don't know if you can even see that there you go understitched as well as top stitched all that together now we're going to take our right side front basically our right our right um, pocket piece. We're gonna lay that on top and we're gonna match up all of our dots and notches along the pocket as well. Here as well. There we go. And then, and of course, once I flatten it down, I'll pin it and we're going to sew this together and if you want to, what I'm probably going to do is, of course, I'm going to move it out the way, do it this way, sew it all the way around towards this edge here. Then what we will do is we will do a line of basting stitches top here to the dot, as well as this way. So this way to the dot. And we'll do that to the other side as well. And that puts our pockets together. So I went ahead and did my pockets on both of my fronts. The only thing that is um, different really is how I kind of combine them. So of course, we did them both down the side here on either side. Now, the pocket on your right side, they have you um, press across the top and down the front so that all of this will be also caught in um, when you put in the zipper. On this side, this is still floating, okay? So literally, I went to the notch across the top, from the dot to the notch, and everything else is floating. So we're gonna take our right front and put it to the side and start focusing on our left front. So, once you have done your pocket on there, another thing they want you to do is go ahead and reinforce this dot here. So with that, you are going to sew um, about an inch on either side of this large dot so that you can then clip to that dot. All right, so I went ahead and reinforced at my dot and clipped to that dot. Not through it, but to it. Um, now we're gonna take our left fly facing. I went ahead and finished um, this straight edge and we're going to sew along this curved edge after matching all of our notches between the dots. Attaching that there, then we're going to open this up and understitch it. So we went ahead, sewed on our front piece, turned it to the back and did some understitching as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to attach both of our fronts um, and we're going to sew from that dot piece all the way down to the notch. Attaching both of the fronts together, right sides together. All right, so my fronts are now attached from the dot down to that notch. So from the front, This is what it's looking like. Now, what we're gonna start doing is start attaching our zipper. So, not focusing on the left side, we're gonna start focusing on the right side first. What we're going to do is we are going to press under five eighths of an inch on this side down to the dot so that we can start working on installing our zipper. All right, so now that we've gone ahead and folded in our right front by five eighths of an inch. I took a zipper and I shortened it. Um, I had a 14 inch zipper and needed it to be shorter. Um, the pattern calls for a nine inch zipper, but you know, sometimes when you want a color, you gotta do what you gotta do. And even with the zipper that is um, described in the pattern, you might have to cut it. Um, so what I did was I went and did some stitches all along the bottom here then I went and cut away the rest of the zipper teeth and then I just burned the edges to seal it in place and I can go back in and trim the rest. So we're gonna put that bottom edge 
at the bottom dot. And this goes to the top. What we are now going to do is we can base this in place. Um, another option is you can pin this in place so that you can do that with the next step. So I'm gone ahead and pinned basted mines in place for the time being. We're now gonna take piece 15, which is our right fly. And we are going to fold this wrong sides together, making sure that we match our notches. And we're going to base the raw edges shut. And then we are going to finish all the edges, either with a zigzag stitch or with um, overlocking. So I'm going to take this to my serger and close this all up on all sides. All right, so I went ahead and finished this right fly. And instead of using a basting stitch, I literally just, um, after folding it in half, I just took it over to my serger and searched it all together on all sides. So now I can still see my notches there. I turned over my pants, so we're seeing the wrong side. And I'm going to pin this right on top like this, matching my notches. And then from the right side, oops, took too many sides up. From the right side, what I can go ahead and do is using my zipper foot, go ahead and install it right along this edge, right along the pin edge. Then we can start working on the left front. All right, so we've gone ahead and attached our zipper to our right side with our right fly facing. So what we're gonna now do, is we're gonna take that and bend that out the way and pin that out the way so that we are um, making sure to not catch it as we start to work on attaching our left side. All right, so once you have um, pinned out your right fly, we're gonna start working on the other side. So, the way that I do it is, is that I turn um, most of my pants over but leave the left fly facing down on top of the zipper. What I am then going to do is from this way, I will pin this in place and then using my same zipper foot, I will sew this down to the inner edge of my right fly or of my left fly, sorry about that. All right, so now that we have gone ahead and sewn our zipper on the left side to the left facing, what we're gonna do is focus on finishing up the inside. One of the great things again about this zipper is that for like a zipper installation, I would say this is one of the easiest that you can do because you don't have any of the top stitching to uh, give it that effect of a zipper. Sometimes when you know it gets a lot of layers, you can uh, mess up and maybe hit the zipper stop or something like that, break a needle. This is pretty simple. Um, so if this is something that you've been afraid of, like installing a zipper, this might be the pair of pants to start with. So what we are now going to do, and I've already went ahead and did it here, is we're gonna focus on finishing the inside piece with this side. So as you can see here, that they've I've already sewn them together. So the way that I did that is literally, while my um, zipper foot is still on, I went and put my left uh, side front along the edge of my left facing, matching my um, matching my seam allowance, and I just used my zipper foot and ran it right along the edge of that, or at a three eighths inch seam allowance, or one centimeter, with the right sides together. So then once I turn that out, we get a nice clean finish of our zipper at the top. And once you have done that, you can go ahead and baste this edge all together closed. And then we can start focusing on putting our whole pants together. So now that our fronts are put together, we have our zipper in, it's now time to start attaching our front to our back. So 
So I'm going to take one of my back pieces and match them right sides together. And we're going to sew along the inseam. So from this all the way down, matching our notches um, all the way down. Now me, I normally like to start sewing from the bottom up. So I probably will turn these around and sew these from the bottom up with the 5 8 inch seam allowance on both legs. So once I went ahead and sewed the inner leg seams, I went ahead and pressed them and then pressed the seam allowances out. Um, just so that there could be that flatness along the seams. Um, hence why I went ahead and finished the edges first. Now what we're going to do is we are going to do our crotch seam uh, matching up our notches and we're going to sew our crotch seam to the dot where we sewed earlier and for reinforcement we're going to sew over that again. So now that we've gone ahead and double stitched our crotch seam to the dot um, I went ahead and pressed those seam allowances open as well. And because we had already notched in um, at the dot um, near the fly, I'm able to press those out evenly and not have any issues there. What we are now going to do is we are going to do our outside leg seams on either side. Again, I like to sew from the bottom up, uh, making sure that I'm matching all of my notches together. So we'll sew these at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Then you can press these to the back. I, again, because I've already finished these edges, I do prefer to press them open, but you can definitely press um, these seam allowances towards the back and it'll be fine and we'll start working on our waistband. So now after doing our side seams as well, the main body of our pants are done and we're gonna put these aside and start working on our waistband. To get our waistbands together, we are going to take our, one of our interface left waistbands and right waistbands, and we are going to sew them together at the double notch on the edge at 5 8 7 8 seam allowance. So once I stitch together the right and left waistband, I press my seam allowance open, and as you can see, I've already started to pin, making sure that all of my notches and dots match and we have this right size together so we're going to sew this at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance um, all the way around and then we'll start working on the inner waistband so once i sewed on the waistband i went ahead and pressed it and then pressed my seam allowances up you can trim some of the seam allowance away and i went ahead and then sewed up the back center back seam of my waistband facing and Press up a half an inch along my notched edge. You can then trim this down to a quarter of an inch. I like to leave a little bit more room just to make sure I catch it. That's me. So what we're now going to do is right sides together. We're going to pin this and sew this around the whole waistband and then we'll come back to focus on finishing. All right. So we went ahead and sewed our facing in place. I then went and graded my seams here and here and started to turn it out. But before fully turning it out, I went to as far as I could and understitched the seam allowance towards the facing itself. So we understitched that all the way around and then I just gave it a good press. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start pinning this in place so that we can stitch in the ditch from the outside, holding this uh, waistband in place. I also went ahead and started trimming, making sure that all my seams and stuff were trimmed up. But overall, you will be done with your pants. As you can see, there are no um, belt loops or anything like that. But once you have sewn in your waistband, you can start working on your finishing. So to finish this, you will want to make sure that you hem the bottom and you want to put in your fasteners. For these pants, you will have a buttonhole here on your right side and you will place a button here. That button does need to be um, put in by hand so that you don't see it from the front. Also, you want to put a hook and bar at the edges here so that you can fully clasp it together. Now, this is a curved waistband so it is meant to fit. But if you are scared that the pants are going to slip off, what I would do 
is try to put your hook and bar just a little bit over just so that you can get a further tug just to make sure that you are holding your pants securely in place. But once you have done that and given it a good press, you are done with UB of ME 2079.